Never in the field of human yacht building has there been so much demand for so many yachts with so few yacht builders. Well, actually the part about few yacht builders is not really true. There are lots of yacht builders out there, but one British brand represents the RAF of nautical excellence, building yachts that Churchill himself would be proud of. And that, of course, is Sunseeker. Racing across the ocean like a Spitfire, the Sunseeker 86 yacht cuts a dashing figure as it fearlessly glides over the waves, leaving a clean white path in its wake, turning heads and raising eyebrows amongst the wealthy populace of the French Riviera, whose only thought upon seeing her is, I want one. Well, many may want one of these amazing yachts, but few can actually have one, since as you can imagine, Sunseeker can only build so many and demand is very high indeed. That's what makes this yacht, called Insomnia, very special. Delivered less than two years ago, she is a pristine example of a Sunseeker 86 yacht, and she's available for sale. So it's my mission, along with my allied forces of Svetlana and Slava, to photograph her, film her, and to tell you all about her. And let's start with a few performance figures. Insomnia is 86 feet, three inches long, 21 feet, three inches wide at her beamiest point, and draws six feet and five inches. I spoke to a Sunseeker representative shortly before filming this, and he told me that the shipyard are particularly proud of her hull design that allows for a very low consumption at 10 knots, with the two MTU 2000 series engines consuming a combined total of about 85 litres an hour, resulting in a range of about 1,500 nautical miles. Put your pedal to the metal though, and the yacht will reach 28 knots. So, the versatility of this hull and engineering package is really very impressive. And while we're on the subject of technical details, I should also mention to you that the yacht is equipped with hydraulic stabiliser fins that work both underway and at anchor, and also an Atlas line voltage regulator. But what does she look like on the inside, I hear you say? Well, in a few moments, I'll be showing you all around the yacht. But I'd like to start here because this platform is such a commercial success for Sunseeker. As you may already know, the entire platform actually lowers down into the sea as a mechanism for launching the tender. Now, the tender in this case is a Williams 390 jet tender. The limitations of the platform go up to a thousand kilos in weight. So that's really gives you an indication of the size of tender that you can put here. It's a smart idea from Sunseeker to store the tender here when a lot of modern builders are actually putting them inside in a transom garage. Now that of course makes the profile of the yacht look very clean, but it does occupy a lot of interior space. In this case, that interior space has been used for the crew so that the owner and his guests have more space inside the yacht. Before I show you the crew quarters though, let me also point this out to you because it's rather a nice feature. And it just shows how Sunseeker have tried to maximize every area of the yacht. This actually folds down, as does the other panel. A couple of cushions fit here and it's just a lovely place when the tender is out, maybe tied up to the yacht, the swim platforms down into the water. You can just sit here, dangling your legs and enjoy, enjoy the view of the scenery around you. Inside here though, let's take a look at the crew quarters. So the crew quarters are compact, but comfortable. We have this seating area here with a table, the captain's cabin through here a washer and a dryer unit. Around the corner here, we have another cabin for two people. And here is access to the engine room with those two MTU 2000 series 
engines that we spoke about earlier. It is a compact area here for the crew. I was talking to the crew to see how they felt about it. And the way that a lot of yachts are used, um, in any case in the south of France, the captain will very often have his own place that he lives in and then visit the yacht every day. Uh, he'll be sleeping here when the yacht's got the owner on board and guests on board. I was also talking to the stewardess, who's quite an inspirational character. She's actually got her STCW, which is the certificate that you need to work on a yacht. She got that back in the UK. She flew over to the south of France to try and find a job and she's immediately been able to get work on this particular yacht so she's delighted for her this is a great experience her first experience in the south of France first experience working on a yacht and she's very very happy with her living accommodations because it's helping her to achieve her dream of working in the yachting industry so not always right to feel sorry for the crew because of the small quarters. A lot of them are very, very happy with the lifestyle and the work that they do and to have a, a comfortable place to be able to sleep and then to work during the day. Let's take a look at the rest of the yacht too. There are steps on either side of the transom leading up to the aft deck. And it's a beautiful, spacious aft deck. I'm not going to talk too much about it because it's apparent that it's a very comfortable area to be able to sit and enjoy the scenery, enjoy some of the design features that you can see around the yacht. Something a little bit more interesting than that though is found right here. Where we have uh, a docking station for the yacht. This is so useful for, for the captain to be able to see exactly how close he is uh, to the dock. Of course, he'll have crew helping him as well, probably on either corner of the aft section. But from here, we have the bow thruster, the stern thruster. You can turn the engines off, to turn them on. And of course, you have the throttle controls too. Everything that you really need to be able to dock the vessel. Sunseeker are all well known for their wow factor though, and this yacht does have wow factor. I mean, just look at the main lounge area here. The design's beautiful. The cushions, the sofas are so sumptuous. Um, but without dwelling too much on that area, a couple of features that I really would like to show you are found on either side of me here. First of all, this side opening door on the starboard side leads on to a part of the bulwark which can actually fold down and become a terrace. And this is just such a lovely place to be able to sit and have a conversation, maybe on the telephone with people or just with somebody at your side. I can absolutely see why Sunsea could do this and why it is so popular. Then over on the other side, we have this unit here. Now this is interesting to me because storage is very often a problem on yachts, particularly this size of yacht. It can be quite challenging to find storage areas. And in fact, Sunseeker have done a lovely job of having that whole open area there with the sofas, the armchairs, the coffee tables at the expense of storage. So this whole area has been dedicated to storage. We have a fridge here for soft drinks. We have a wine fridge here. And then these two central doors give ample storage for plates and glassware as well. Whilst the top, of course, being a, a marble top, is very easy to keep clean, uh, to wipe it dry. And I can well imagine that stewardess is coming from the galley that's through there, and we'll be looking at it in a few moments, can very easily prepare things, snacks and drinks here, and then serve them to the guests there who are watching presumably their favorite YouTuber on the television. From the dining area, let's move further forward because I'd like to show you most of the uh, guest accommodation. I say most because as you'll see in a few moments, the layout of the yacht is really quite unusual. So down the stairwell and moving aft, we have two of the guest cabins. Each one of them with two single bunks, nice space in between the two, very, very nice lighting. I can just imagine waking up in the morning in the Balearic Islands or somewhere else, opening up the blinds and enjoying that view. Um, but look at the size of the bathroom. This is particularly impressive. Really large bathroom space with a very, very well-sized uh, shower. And remember, these are the smaller cabins on board the yacht, as you'll see in a few moments because this is the master stateroom. Uh, full beam of the yacht. I particularly like the fact that you've got a, a seat here with a mirror to be able to put 
your makeup on in the morning if you use makeup or just sit there with a computer do some work on the other side we have those two very comfy looking armchairs and that's a lovely place just to sit and read a book or have a beer and enjoy again the wonderful view through the windows this is a proper walk-in closet here so lots of space uh, for clothing if you were to go for a couple of weeks you'd certainly have ample storage space for clothes once again let's take a look at this fantastic bathroom beautifully finished and again with a really huge shower cubicle too so we have the master stateroom here further aft we have those two single cabins with two single beds in them that might seem to be limited accommodation for a yacht of this size but that's because there's another cabin in a place where you wouldn't really expect it to be and to see that we now have to go back up to the stairs to the forward section of the yacht which is mostly a crew area let me show you what i mean and this of course is the area where crew and guests merge together in blissful union we have a day head here and this bar area with this lovely granite worktop now of course guests will be able to sit around here and enjoy a cool brew while the crew are working in the galley there the chef is conjuring up some culinary delight in a lovely area with lots of natural sunlight coming in great equipment as well and the galley of course unites onto the inside dining area we've already seen that part of the yacht so let's just take a little look around here where we have a corner dinette you may wonder what this is that's actually covering a socket so that you can plug your computer in and this little cutout allows the cables through i also like the fact that sunseek have elevated this position for the helm station uh, for the visibility this is really quite a big yacht with a very high bow so by creating that platform there and putting the helm seats up at a higher level the captain has great visibility and of course he has all of his equipment here with large screens where you can see the GPS, the radar, the engine parameters, everything that you really need. And as, as time goes on, those controls are getting simpler and simpler, more intuitive to use and easier for a captain to operate. This is where the yacht is quite unusual though, because as I mentioned earlier, the accommodation is split into two areas. We've already seen the three cabins um, midships. Moving forward, as a VIP stateroom. Let's take a look at it. Now, by dividing the accommodation spaces into two separate areas, Sunseeker have really been able to get the best use out of all of the space that's on board. Some things that you can't actually see here is that just behind Slava, who's filming over there, there's a desk with a worktop, a little beauty cabinet for you to be able to put your lipstick on in the morning. There's a really well-proportioned uh, wardrobe through there too. But around here, what I was particularly impressed by, again, was the size of the bathroom. This is a really nice sized uh, bathroom with a very large shower, beautifully appointed with lovely marble as well. Of course, if you are a guest on this yacht, you won't spend too much time in here apart from when you want to sleep. Most of the time you'll be out in the sunshine on the decks. So let's take a look at the deck space on this yacht. Actually, if you put some Sunseeker yachts side by side over the last 10, 15 years and you compared them, it'd be notable how these yachts have become far bigger and more voluminous over the years as they've evolved, uh, even though the actual length has stayed pretty much the same. This is a great example. You see, they've brought the superstructure all the way forward here, all the way forward here so that you have more head height underneath. But by doing that, you've now got space as well for this lovely seating area and sunbathing area. It's a whole extra part of deck space for guests to enjoy. So you have the aft deck, you have the fore deck, lovely area for just a private conversation or to be able to enjoy a beer and the fantastic scenery around you. But this is actually nothing in comparison to the main part of the deck space, which is on the flybridge. I'm really looking forward to showing you that. I feel like I've pretty much left the best till last. really is such a special area first of all it seems huge when you consider that we're on an 86 foot long 
yachts, but it's also so well appointed. You have this beautiful bar area here. Um, you have the captain's helm station over there, which is actually quite nicely hidden away. As I mentioned earlier, the captain will mostly be commanding the vessel from that station there, but he certainly won't be in anybody's way. You've got that lovely seating area there. I suspect that a lot of people will be dining mostly on this deck because it's just such a lovely position. Here you've got a, a sun awning which pulls all the way across or opens up depending on whether you want shade or not. You have sunbathing space there. It kind of makes you want to just take the yacht for a week and go away and enjoy it, which of course usually is absolutely not possible if the yacht's for sale. However, with this yacht, it is possible because apart from being for sale, she's also on the charter market. That offers quite an interesting opportunity because it's not unusual for uh, buyers to want to use the yacht before they actually buy it. But of course you can't do that. Uh, when you have a contract to buy a yacht, you have to put a deposit down before you can even see trial uh, the yacht. In this case, if somebody wanted to, they could charter the yacht for a week, for two weeks, see if it's something they like, see if it's something they want to uh, pursue the purchase of. Um, it also means that an eventual buyer will be able to continue to keep the yacht on the charter market and bring revenue in that will offset some of the running costs. That, together with the fact that it's a yacht that was built in 2020 and still has quite a bit of its two-year warranty to run, makes this quite an exceptional opportunity. If you're interested in more details about the yacht, I'm actually not the right person to talk to. The right person to talk to is my colleague and friend, Ed Dickinson, whose contact details will appear on screen now.